What is up guys? Today I'm bringing you guys an Atlas strategy that I have been using since the start of the league to make a currency. I have great fun and success with this strategy, so today I will be sharing it. It revolves around harvest and expedition. So in 3.22, GG has added two new keystones regarding these league mechanics. We have crop rotation right here on the right of the Atlas tree. And we also have Expedition node, which is called Extreme Archaeology. First of all, Extreme Archaeology is a really simple keystone to understand. Uh, instead of multiple explosives, you will have one big explosion for the expedition. In my opinion, it makes the encounter much simpler and much more fun. A lot of people have been talking about this keystone and it is easy to use, so I will be skipping the detailed explanation of this keystone, but I will give you guys some tips and how I do my expeditions at the end of the video. Now let's get on to crop rotation. The crop rotation reads as follows. The harvest crops in your maps contain only tier 1 plants, and harvesting crops in your maps have the chance to upgrade the tier of plants of different colors. This is a little bit difficult to understand at first, but essentially the plants in harvest will have tier 1 monsters at the start, and when you harvest a crop, it will upgrade the tiers of monsters of the other colors. This will result in a big explosion of life force when you harvest the last crop when done correctly. And the strategy is to keep the crops with the least colors at the end so you can upgrade the tier of the monsters by harvesting the other colors first. I think it will be easier to understand when I show you an example. Okay, so here is an example of a sacred grove. We have four crops here. Now I'm just going to look at the crops and see we have a a lot of yellow plants here and then two purple and one blue so first we decide which one we which crop we're gonna harvest last and this it's going to be blue and purple last that once that's decided so we are going to be killing the yellow plants this way it's going to be upgrading the purple and blue plants the most this guy wants a cluster jewel so let me just do a quick trade Okay, we're back. As we were saying, we're going to be killing the yellow plants first. This way we are going to be upgrading yellow and purple plants and keep them for the last crop. And let's get it started. It doesn't really matter which one you pick at when there are low tiers. How it works is that Harvest Monsters has a chance to drop life forces depending on their tier. And when there are low tier monsters, they have really, really low chance of dropping some life forces. So now that we killed one, let's just see how much we're upgraded. We have purple upgraded 8 and blue 8. And this crop, just to for demonstration purposes, the yellow is not upgraded and the purple has 7 upgraded. Now we're just going back to kill the yellow plants again to see how many we get tier 3 monsters for blue and purple. Another good thing about this strategy is that in the beginning the monsters are really, really really easy to kill because they're just low tier monsters. And we have another trade but I think I'm gonna turn on D&D &D and ignore this one. Okay, after killing the last yellow plants we see that there are tier 3 blues and 8 of the purple didn't get upgraded. So as you can see the variation is pretty high. And here we also have 8 purple. So now we're just going to be killing the yellow to upgrade the last crop once again. Oh, and this happened. So what happened is that we have a 10% chance that when we choose to kill the crop, the other crop will not wilt. This is a passive on the Atlas tree and it's, it has a 10% chance of happening. This happened and by killing the yellow plant, we upgraded the one purple next to it to four tier 3 plants. And the one we see on the bottom, the blue has become from 3 to 5, and the purple didn't move. So as you can see, the, uh, the chance of upgrading is uh, has a very, very high variance. Now we're just going to kill the purple here to harvest the 4 tier 3 plants. This will upgrade the, the, plant, the blue plants at the end. Uh, we had 5 tier 3 blues, and we're going to see how much we get. Okay, so the blue didn't move and the purple didn't move because we just killed purple. 
Oh, uh, apparently the blue moved, but it only moved once we click it because there is currently a bug that doesn't display how many uh, that are upgraded. That bug doesn't happen very often, but it does happen sometimes. Okay, so that's that's it. That's basically the strategy. Um, I forgot to mention I don't have the doubling of the life force sextant because I'm I'm recording this after my farming session. I have used all my sextants, and so we have around. 1500 life forces and as you can see i don't have the sextant that doubles it so when we use the sextant while farming we are going to be getting about 3000 life forces okay i'm gonna put them away and try a new map to see if we have another example that i can show you guys So uh, I will be mentioning that I'm running Strand and Beach for this Atlas strategy because uh, the two are next to each other and we're able to sustain the, our maps using the singular focus keystone. Regal regarding altars, I usually just click quant because it affects the quantity of drops we have uh, of the life forces. Just gonna rush through. I won't be full clearing the maps for the demonstration. And we have another altar. Like that. We're going to be continuing. And as you can see, we have a beach map. So it's very easy to sustain the maps. We also have expedition as mentioned previously in the maps. And we don't we are triggering expedition naturally, just like this. Uh, about 85 to 90% of the of the maps. Okay, so here we have another example. Let's continue. We have purple plants, blue plants, yellow plants. The yellow has two, two, and the, the other one has three. So we'll be leaving the yellow ones last. And since the blue ones are worth more uh, currently in the market, I'll be clearing the purple life force to try to upgrade blue and yellow. Okay, that is one done. The yellow and blue are upgraded. As you can see, there's an upgrade over there. There's an upgrade over here, nine, which is pretty good. And then three and three. So as you can see, the va there's a lot of variation. With one upgrade, the blue plants went from zero to three tier twos, and the yellow went from zero to nine tier twos. This one is done, and we're gonna take a look again. So the yellow ones now have two tier three plants. I'm gonna take a look at the other one. Okay, we have uh, still nine tier twos, I believe. So we're going to keep killing the purple crop and try to upgrade the yellow and blue crop and keep them for the last harvest. Okay, so for yellow we have four tier threes and for blue we have two tier threes. So I'll definitely be killing the yellow plants. And just to mention that we there is an up Atlas passive node that previously I mentioned before that gave us a 10% chance that the other crop doesn't wilt. So for example, if we kill the yellow plants, oh, it's here. So if we kill the yellow plants, there's a 10% chance that the blue one will not wilt. And wow, it happened. I think we're buffed because we're recording a video. I think GGG knows that when we are recording a video, so they're gonna buff me. So what's gonna happen here is while we're killing the yellow plants, the blue plants afterwards will be upgraded. And uh, it should be noted that there's a lot of death on death effect for harvest. Just be careful when you're looting. Okay, after you can see we have three tier three for the blue ones. So there's one that got upgraded. As mentioned previously, the variation is pretty uh, high.
on death effects just almost died over there. Let's see how many uh, we got. So we have 700 blue, 500 yellow, and 27 purple. Okay, so 1300 total life forces. And we're not using the sextons that doubles it. I dropped a beach map, so I think, and we have two more sextant that guarantees the secret grove, so why not just use it? This way I'll show you guys my thought process when I'm doing this strategy. And uh, the beach map is also has a very, very similar layout to the strand. It's very open and straightforward. Very good for expedition. Oh, for this one, we have a lucky one. So we have a five harvest, a lot of blues and three yellows and one purple. So we are going to be keeping the purple last the um, by killing blues first and then yellows and then last one purple this way we're going to be maximizing our chance of upgrading the blue and yellow plants at the end My mana is gone. just be careful with harvest monsters there are a lot of on death effects as I mentioned previously when you're looting the life forces uh, just be careful so we have killed one blue and just gonna take a quick look and how many that are upgraded for these two, we have 6 and 8, and for this one, we have 8 and 7. It's, it is pretty good. Keep killing the blue ones. Oh, we have the proc, the 10% chance for the plants to not wilt. I think this, this is going to be a great uh, harvest right here. Because when we proc that 10% chance, it's as if we get an extra harvest. So the purple has one tier 3, the two yellows here, we have also one tier 3s. So we're just going to keep killing the blue ones. By triggering the 10% chance of crops not wilt, we basically get a free chance to upgrade the, the plants uh, to harvest at the end. And I think there's going to be a massive potential for big loot here. For this one. Just going to take a quick look here. We have two tier threes, four tier threes. And then, oh, as you can see, we have a boss on the purple which is very, very lucky. We only upgraded it three times and we got a boss. This is very, very lucky. I think as mentioned previously, GG knows when I'm recording and the loot gets buffed. Okay, this one is done. So let's take a quick look at the yellow and purple. We have three and four tier threes here. And for this one, we have the boss and uh, so we're gonna keep killing the yellow ones oh well apparently it was bugged and we have a yellow boss over here as well that is insanely lucky i have happened twice in 50 map to have uh, two bosses spawn in the harvest i'll have the data in the spreadsheet afterwards oh i think i'm gonna die here because uh, i didn't get out of the circle the harvest monsters can be tough, especially the bosses. For this boss, it just, when he does the circle attack, you have to get out of it. It's similar to the Cyrus a Meteor, the maze. So I think I, he might do it again. Let's see it. And there's an audio cue as well. Okay, so he's roaring, he's doing the circle. I'm getting out of the circle, explodes, and we're good just going to keep killing him and yes all the harvest bosses they're going to have a phase where they get uh, damage reduction and spawn some uh, mobs just keep hitting him it's fine here we go the, dro the boss drops 400 life forces and this is without the sextant that doubles all the life forces now we have the purple boss to kill we harvest the purple and we the yellow was still there it would be a massive amount of, of life forces. So the, for the purple boss, it's a big bear that does a slam. Just don't get into the melee range. And uh, there is a big animation when, the, when the, the bear slams. Just be careful. It will definitely kill you. And if there's too much loot, you can click Z, Z to remove the loot. This way you can fight the boss without having the loot on your screen. I 
right, here we go. We have another 450 purple life force from the boss. So in total, we have a lot of life forces, and this is without the sextant. And we also have a node in the tree that doubles, has a chance to double the drop, uh, the life force drops. We're gonna keep the, those fractured items to identify later. So in that map, we have 72 blue, about 1,000, 1,100 yellows, and 1,200 purple. Here we go. So that's a total of 2,300, 2,400. So 2,400 life forces without the doubling sextants. Pretty good. We have a last map I'm going to showcase. Let's take another strand over here, Hulk and uh, Chisel for the quantity and um, pack size. Let's go. For those who don't know, the quantity and the pack size does affect the harvest monsters. So we want as much quantity as possible and as much pack size as possible. Okay, so we have the secret grove over here. We have four harvest, two pairs of blues and two pairs of yellows. So currently in the market, the blue four life force are worth more. So I'll just be killing the yellow ones first to upgrade the uh, blue ones. They're not dying because I think there's an invulnerability aura from one of the rares. Yep, just gonna take some time here. We got some more fractured bases, so my inventory is full. I'll just identify them to check if there's anything good. Tier 1 life. Garbage. Uh, garbage. 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 Tier 1 life. Maybe it's worth something. I don't know. Maybe 5 to 10 C. We're going to keep that. And loot this and keep going. So we're going to be checking how many blues got upgraded. 7 and 8. And we have five and seven okay let's go down and kill the yellow plants so we have two tier threes over here two tier threes and two tier threes so that's easy decision. We're just gonna clear the the, the crops that has the most tier three monsters. I think this one is basically going to be an average uh, life force amount of life force you get for a uh, for crop harvest. We'll see how much we get at the end. And this doesn't really matter, they all have two tier threes. Okay, we're done. And let's see how many we got. 796 blue life force for a harvest that has four plots of land. And we only did upgrade twice because there was uh, two pairs of blues. So yeah, this would be an example of a below average amount of life force. Hopefully this helped you understand how the keystone works. And now I'm gonna show you my Atlas tree. It is very simple Atlas tree. We're going to be taking all the expedition nodes and all the harvest nodes. If you click on the Atlas tree, the icon over here, it will show you where all the harvest nodes are. 
So we're taking every one of them except the one on the bottom where it gives us higher chance to get harvest because we're going to be guaranteeing harvest through a sextant. We have all the important ones, the doubling of life forces, uh, chosen uh, crop to not wilt. One important thing is that the points leading to crop rotation should be chosen depending on which color of the sextant you're using. For example, if you're using the blue life force sextant, you should be blocking blue plants because the sextant is guaranteeing blue plants in the secret grove. There's a chance you will get a secret grove full of blue plants. For expedition, we're just gonna take all the expedition chance increase and the big boom and all the other important one like the log books, the node on the right over here, the, you should choose Danning and Tujin because their reroll currency are worth more than the other ones. We'll be using growing hordes to increase the pack size of our maps. Uh, I invested uh, four blue, uh, rusted scarabs, which are about one chaos each for every uh, single map. This will increase the pack size by 20. And if you have enough points, you can take all the nodes up here to increase the unique modifiers of the maps. This will also increase the quantity of uh, the maps. And we're going to be blocking all the other uh, mechanics other than Secret Grove and Expedition. Technically, you can block Secret Grove because we're guaranteeing it anyway. For the altars, I've chosen blue altars because they give us more quantity, and, uh, but you can also use the red ones. All you have to do is using the gateway and you will be able to allocate the points to the red altars. And here we have the spreadsheet that everybody loves. So I did two farming sessions. The first one, uh, 20 maps, but there's one, one I forgot to put the new sextant in, so I'm gonna discount that. And uh, here we see the map cost, and each map cost us 21.5 chaos. This includes the sext sextants, uh, which has the life force sextant and secret grove sextant. Uh, I buy it in bulk on TFT. The maps cost us in total 2.2 divines. And I can report that we are sustaining our maps ourselves, beach and strand. And so there, we don't need to buy new maps. For the second part, I decided to add a sextant that increases the magic pack size because they are so cheap and pack size affects the boast harvest and expedition. In total, we're getting uh, around 2000 life force per map, uh, as you can see here, and uh, that is worth currently around 30 chaos. And we're also getting an average of 19.28 chaos from expedition per map. And we have expedition in 85% uh, of our map. So the map costs us around 20 chaos and we're getting 50 chaos back. This is just counting expedition and harvest. So the divine per hour really depends on fa how fast you're clearing the maps. Overall, purely from harvest and expedition, we're getting around 30 chaos per map. I'll let some farming footage roll in the background and talk about some notes. Regarding this Atlas strategy, I think you can also do it with no investment and uh, focus on expedition instead. We're basically guaranteeing 85% expedition in our maps, so that is also very profitable. And before you can afford the sextant, uh, you can just run expedition to get enough currency to by the sextant. The overall the strategy is very 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 stable uh, because we're getting a stable source of uh, life force and uh, the life force price has been climbing recently. Currently the blue life force is worth the most and th this will definitely change as the league goes on because people will be looking uh, at card gambling using yellow life forces. For the sextant, you can use blue, purple, or yellow sextant. Just make sure you're blocking the same color of plants as the sextant you're using. If not, you're going to be get a harvest that has all the same colors and you will be unable to upgrade any of the tier one monsters. As for expedition, I usually just stand in the middle, try to see where the middle is in the map. And since our build deals uh, all the three elemental damages and some physical damage, we can deal with pretty much all the mods. The expedition monsters can be really really tough sometimes if you hit the wrong mods. 
for example, there are mods such as hits cannot be evaded. And since we're evasion build, that's going to be really, really tough. And we also have uh, things like hits, al hits always critical strike, and uh, that is very tough as well. Sometimes the monsters can have mods such as uh, they don't receive any critical strike. Uh, that can be a really big damage loss for our build since we're doing critical strikes. There's also a mod that gives them 50% chance to block attack damage. In order to solve that issue, I put a passive in our tree. This is the attack mastery passive. Uh, it's the one near on the right, which grants us a, an additional projectile. This passive says monsters cannot block your attacks. So this will negate the mods that give them 50% chance to block our attacks. In addition to that, we are using the mark mastery that says mark enemies cannot regener regenerate life. There are some rare monsters in the expedition and there are also a mod that grants expedition monsters to regenerate life uh, after a couple of seconds. So this passive will help with that. For the altars, basically for the blue altars, uh, I usually just click quantity and this will increase the amount of life force we get. And uh, the blue altars can be really tough and definitely expect to die sometimes. If you're running blue altars and not immune and you're not immune to chill, I would suggest the Soul of the Brain King. The third line says that there is a 50% reduced effect of chill on you. This is because sometimes uh, the altar says that you will be uh, reflecting the elements back to yourself. If you are running the red altars, I would suggest Soul of the Aberrath as a second minor uh, pantheon. This will help with the burning ground that the monsters spawn on beneath you. This is pretty much it. I'll be leaving a, the, a link to the spreadsheet in the comments or in the description of the video. I hope I explained this strategy well and you guys can try, try it out yourself and look at the numbers and maybe tell me what other strategy you guys are running. I have been really having fun with this harvest and expedition strategy. So I'll be leaving a link to the Atlas tree and the link to the spreadsheet if you guys want to look at the numbers down in the description. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.